my name is Gary Wood. I'm a Life Science Service Rep with Getting Up. We're here today to go through the safety videos for operating the equipment in a safe manner. The model we're looking at today is a model 733 LS. The 733 LS has a power open door, mechanical gauges, the display panel, and the operating buttons. We're going to go through how everything works on the autoclave and how to operate the autoclave in a safe and proper manner. First thing I want to start with is the jacket pressure gauge. This gauge indicates the amount of pressure in the jacket. The jacket is the surrounding metal structure for the chamber. We preheat the jacket to keep the chamber at temperature and to help minimize the condensate forming in the chamber. Next, we have the chamber pressure gauge. This indicates the amount of pressure or vacuum in the chamber at any given time. It's very important that we never open up the door with two pounds or more pressure or two pounds or more of vacuum. In fact, our machine will not allow this to happen. That is one safety feature of the machine. We also have the display panel, which gives us the information on the machine as it's running. We also have the indicator lights, which shows us if the door is closed, if the door is sealed, if the sterilizer is in process, if the process is complete, or if the process failed, either due to an alarm or a manual abort. We also have buttons that operate different features of the machine. First button is the closed door button. The next is the open door. Then we have clear alarm, and then we have start. The other buttons will change functions as the machine is operating. We do not allow you to make a choice that would possibly harm you during the operation of the machine. So you will only be able to select uh, the options available that will let you safely operate the machine and let you advance or abort the machine as necessary. Next we have the printer, which keeps a running log of the cycles that you're running the control on off button and then the control disable enable key. The sterilizer has just completed a successful cycle. At this point we can see on the display our process complete light is illuminated in green. Our door has unsealed which happens at the end of a successful cycle so the door seal light is now off and the door close light is on. At this point, we will press the door open. You hear the alarm or the chime indicating that the door open process is beginning. This is warning you to stay clear of the door as it opens. This is a power operated door. It's very important you allow the door to open all the way. At that time, the machine will go into standby on the display. At this time, we remove the load that is in the machine. To do this, you need autoclave safe gloves to handle the hot processed load that's coming out of the machine. The load has just been exposed to temperatures of around 250 degrees Fahrenheit or 121 degrees Celsius. Once the load's complete, you can remove your gloves and close the door. This is done by pressing the door close button. 
once again, it's very important to not be in the way of the door as it swings closed. If something is obstructing the door, there is a safety mechanism that allows the door to disengage its clutch. Uh, much like an elevator door, once it senses pressure, it will stop its motion. Once the door has pivoted around, the clutch will re-engage. That's the pop noise you just heard and you will hear again. At that time, if there's no obstructions, you can release the door and it will go back to its closing action. With a basic understanding of the different components of the machine, now we're going to go through the loading process. Now this is where you put the load into the machine. We will be selecting a cycle, opening the door, and properly loading the machine. First we begin with selecting the cycle. In our indicator keys here, we go across and we locate select cycle. With a push of the button, the display changes to bring up your pre-programmed cycles. We simply scroll down and locate the cycle that we're looking for and push enter. This brings up the desired cycle. At this point, we will push the open door button. Please take note that with that chime alarm, that's meaning the door is in its opening process. Please give it room to open. Don't have anything behind the door that may obstruct the door from opening all the way. Once the door is open, we'll put on our autoclave safe gloves because the internal components in the chamber are hot. Those components can be either at 121 degrees Celsius, which is 250 degrees Fahrenheit, or 135 degrees Celsius, which is 275 degrees Fahrenheit. The racks do slide in and out, so if you have a large amount of your autoclaving, you can set your load in and work out and then slide the shelving back in. Today we're using a small load. This is liquid, so I've selected a liquid cycle. Once it's in, I can remove my gloves and I can hit the close door button, which will close the door and allow us to start our process. Once the door is closed, the door closed light illuminates and my start light is blinking, which means everything is okay to start your cycle. What I'm doing now is I'm switching cycles off of the liquid cycle. If you happen to abort a liquid cycle, liquid cycles depressurize the chamber at a controlled rate. This can be anywhere from three quarters of a pound per minute up to 1.25 pounds per minute. If I were aborting a liquid cycle, it would take me on average anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes to wait for the chamber to reach a safe condition which is a slight vacuum and an internal temperature of about 93 degrees centigrade. The reason we hold the, the liquid so long and decrease the pressure in that way is if you drastically decrease the pressure of a hot liquid, the liquid will actually flash off. And whatever you put in, if you're hoping to use that, you would lose about 50 to 75 percent of what you put in. That's why we decrease the temperature and pressure at a controlled amount. In a gravity or a vacuum, we don't have to worry about the decrease in pressure. So when we decrease the pressure under those loads, or we call it exhausting, the exhaust occurs at a almost a wide open rate. It only takes about 
10 to 30 seconds for it to decrease the pressure and get the pressure where we could actually open the door. So selecting a different cycle, I'm pushing down and finding the cycle I want to select and then I push enter. My door is already closed. My start light is blinking, so I'll restart the cycle. The door will seal. Once the door is sealed, it goes into what's called purge. Purge is the first step in both liquid gravity and also the vacuum. During purge, what we're doing is we're pressurizing the chamber with steam and having the drain valve open, we're actually pushing the air out of the chamber. You cannot sterilize anything that has air contacting your load. So it's of vital importance that we remove all the air or as much of it as possible to assure that your load can process. The purge will normally last for two minutes. After the purge, we will notice the machine going in to a process called conditioning. We've now completed the purge phase. Now we're in the conditioning phase. This is the secondary way of removing air from the chamber and from the load being processed. We vent the chamber down and eliminate the pressure in the chamber. As we're doing this, we'll go into a vacuum. That allows the load to expand. Once the load expands, we repressurize the chamber and actually squeeze the load. As we're expanding the load, we're drawing in steam to whatever is being processed. As we increase the, press, increase the pressure, we're actually squeezing the air out of the load. This is done three to five times to ensure that we've removed the air out of the load being processed. With every conditioning phase, we remove 90% of the air left in the chamber after the purge. So by running three conditioning pulses, we remove 90% of the air left in the chamber. The next, we remove 90% of the air that's left in the chamber from the previous, and so on and so on. We're now in the heat up phase of a cycle. We're gonna take this moment to explain the indicators on the display. On the upper left, we have the amount of exposure time selected. Next to that is the exposure time or exposure temperature selected. Next to that is the amount of drying time selected. If we are running a liquid cycle, this box would be blank. We do not dry during a liquid cycle. On the next line down, it will show you the cycle running. Below that is the phase that we're in. Over to the right is the amount of time we've been in process for this cycle. Below that is the amount of time we've been in the phase. So we can now see that we've been in the heat up for three minutes and 32 seconds. Below that is a bar graph display and it gives us the chamber temp and the chamber pressure in PSIA that would be atmospheric plus the amount of pressure in the chamber. This display also gives us the remaining time displayed on the screen. So if you're running a process, you can come in and see the amount of time until you can remove your load from the sterilizer. This is an average timer. It will vary on the amount of load being processed and the utilities being used. Down below, we can see a button marked Setup, which gives us, if we push that, gives us a detail screen, which if I select that, you can see all the parameters indicated on the display. If I drop down again, you can actually see a plot graph 
both heat and temperature, or both temperature and pressure of the cycle being processed. Push that up again. I can go down to the bar graph, which was where we were. I, system menu, which is for maintenance, and about. About is important because if the display is too bright or too dark, we can either increase the brightness or decrease the brightness to make the screen easier to read. Once completed, simply select home to return back. Now we'll go back to the bar graph and select that. As you can tell, we've gone into the exposure phase. We've been in there for 11 seconds now. At this time, I want to show you how to phase advance a cycle and abort. First, we're going to phase advance. Phase advance can only be used when the phase is a timed phase, such as exposure. We have a three minute exposure, therefore it's timed and we can phase advance. If I push the button, it skips to the next phase. You can see the cycle advanced and we've gone into exhaust. Exhaust is not a timed phase because we're just decreasing the amount of pressure. Notice that our abort button is up and we did not have to select another button to get to it. So at this time, we will abort the cycle. When you abort the cycle, it goes to the end of its cycle. You can see a red indicator that says abort manual which means I've manually aborted the machine. We're in the drying phase. Simply phase advance through the drying cycle. We're air in and back to standby. Because I manually aborted the cycle, the door did not unseal itself. If I were to push the door open button, oh, it, you're gonna have to back up because when you went to this side over here, I wasn't panned over there far enough. Okay. So, uh, go if ahead. you want to get a picture of this, okay, I got the whole thing. Okay. Go ahead. Ready? Mm -hmm. Please note, we're in standby, which means the cycle is complete, but the door did not unseal during a manual abort and an alarm, the door does not automatically unseal. We have to do that manually. So the first step to do that is to uh, clear the alarm, which a manual abort is, in a form, is a form of alarm. To do that, we push the clear alarm button, and now we can push the door open button. Please note the CE end unsealing is in process. And this is a timed event. It goes for 34 seconds. Let me take this time to inform you we went from the heat up phase into the exposure phase. The exposure phase is the time your load remains at temperature for the amount of time you've selected. At the end of that comes the exhaust phase, which we saw in an earlier screen. The exhaust phase is simply the time that we are removing the pressure from the chamber. After that, there was a drying to this phase, which I phase advanced through. Drying is simply we're holding the chamber under a vacuum to evaporate the liquid off of the load and sucking it down the drain. After that, there is an air in phase, which simply returns the chamber to atmospheric pressure. I'd like to take a moment at this point to discuss the loading materials going into the autoclave. It's very important we use a Nalgene tray. These trays are designed to withstand the temperature and pressure inside the chamber. It's very important to inspect the tray before use. 
when you're using a Nalgene tray, over time, they can deteriorate. You can notice in this tray, there's holes. You can see the difference in coloration. This would not be a proper tray to use. It will not allow you to contain the liquid within the tray. If you use a material that has a lower melt point than what we're operating at, you can cause severe damage to not only the interior equipment in the autoclave, you can also plug the drain piping. This would be an example of what not to use in the autoclave. This was a plastic that obviously had a melting point below the temperature we were operating the unit at. This caused damage to the autoclave. Please be aware and be safe. What do I do if the alarm goes off? If you get an alarm during a cycle or even when the machine is in standby, you first want to hit the clear alarm button. As you can see, the chime stopped, but our alarm is still there. That's caused by a fault that is current. If the fault is current, you can't clear the alarm until the repair is made. But at least we were able to silence the machine. So once the repair is made to the machine, this alarm will go away and the sterilizer is ready to be used again. Okay. I just pushed the button and this time the indicator and the alarm went away. This means the fault is not present at this time. Okay. Please see your department head or instructor for proper safety equipment to be worn during the operation of this machine. Our sterilizer displays come with a screen saver where the screens actually power down for the display. To restore the function of the unit, simply press any of the operation buttons and the screen will light back up. This is an AMSCO 2021 sterilizer with stage three controls. This has a manually operated door that you have to tighten and loosen with the door nut. We'll start with the controls. This sterilizer has four selectable cycles, two gravity and two liquid on this unit here. By selecting a cycle, you can see the sterilization time, temperature, and also if there's a dry time. To load this piece of equipment, you simply open the door, install the load in the chamber, Close the door, make sure it seats, and you'll want to turn the lock until it is firmly seated. And then you can start the cycle on the machine. You do so by pressing the button twice. And the machine basically goes through the same phases as our unit. This machine does not have a phase advance. You can only abort this machine. To abort this machine, simply hit the reset button and the machine will go into an abort mode. You will hear a short chime and you notice the temperature and pressure will start to decrease. You must wait until the pressure gets down to a safe level to open the door safe level actually being zero pounds in the chamber. Once the pressure is at zero, you are safe to open the door. Any amount of pressure in the chamber while you're opening the door is that pressure every square inch on the door pushing against you when you finally get the door open. This could result in a possibility of your you're getting a flash burn from steam on your arms and your face. So please be aware of this fact and please be safe. This is the AMSCO sterilizer on the third floor. It's virtually the same as the one in the basement, only it has a larger door. This door requires more strength to close. If you're unable to close the door properly, please seek help. This is a stage three controller. Operate it just like the one I explained earlier that was located in the basement.